Hey guys, Aaron here, coming at you with a knife review. This is the Kershaw Tilt, and I freaking love this knife. One of my favorite knives of all time, I think, so far at least. I kind of see this knife as like Kershaw's giant middle finger to the rest of the production knife companies and just being like, look what I can do with all my big fancy machines. So, I'm just going to go over this a little bit and... Uh, show you guys what I think about it. It's just, it's crazy. This knife is deceptively large. I was shocked when I got it, but it measures at a overall length of nine and a half inches with a blade length of around four inches. And it's a little difficult to uh, measure because the blade length is not in line with the handle and the end of it is curved, but from about the middle to the tip is four inches. And the, the, the cutting surface is a little different, but uh, the knife weighs, for being a nine and a half inch long knife, the knife weighs a dainty five ounces, which I just think is incredible. Um, it has a carbon fiber scale, titanium uh, scale with a with a or lock face with a you know with a lock bar. Um, it has oh it's a, a backspacer designed knife, so it's got a flow through design like that, which is really cool, kind of reminiscent of like Hinderer's backspacers a little bit. Um, I think that contributes a little bit to the weight, so it's kind of neat. Uh, it is amazingly comfortable in the hand. If this was a handgun, I would say that this knife pointed very naturally. When you grip it in the hand, um, it's giving you just exactly the right angle to fully utilize this blade shape. It's very comfortable, and it has no jimping whatsoever, but I don't think it's an issue with the way that the, the handle sort of comes down into your hand and really locks it in. Not to mention the choil you have here formed by the flipper. Uh, uh, the pocket clip here is uh, titanium, very strong. Um, I was carrying it tip up because it does not have a left hand carry option and I don't think I would want a clip on this side anyway. But um, carry tip up, it's very very comfortable, very fast to deploy. Uh, yeah, just overall really 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 awesome. The, and the, the tip is cool. It's a little tight. Um, I think on tip down, it would look a little weird. I think the tip, the, the, or I'm sorry, with the tip up, it would look weird. With the tip down, I think it actually it makes the lock side look a little bit better. Um, deployment is obviously done via a flipper, and this knife is crazy fast. Uh, made possible mostly by Kershaw's KVT system, so inside here along the pivot point are um, captured washer, or captured ball bearings in a nylon washer that are lubricated. You can see a picture of this on my website where I actually um, took the, the knife apart. The link is um, down in the description. But it is, I mean, I've handled a bunch of custom knives. I own a number of them. And this knife is on par with any custom knife. Super crazy smooth. You can see the lock up there is uh, pretty early, you know, not amazingly early, but pretty early. That's, you know, maybe 30%. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, it's just great. Um, it's also rock solid. You have absolutely no blade play in any direction. Uh, very, very solid lock up on a knife like this. Um, I, I just, I love frame lock knives. Oh, and this is really, really neat. If you can see the lock bar there, you'll notice that it's not cut at a straight 90 degrees in. It is cut angled and what that means is when you take and you you cannot physically, I'm pushing really hard, you physically cannot overextend the lock bar. It just won't. And so you don't have a, a traditional like hinderer lock bar stabilizer but this is cut inward at an angle like this so the frame overlaps the lock bar so it can't physically be pushed further out. That's really cool. Um, I've never seen anybody else do that before. Um, the blade shape, uh, this is somewhere between like a, a mix between a Warncliffe or a sheep's foot, or I called it sort of like a, a drop point sheep's foot, I think. Um, it's great for chopping, slicing, pull cutting, whatever you want. Um, the tip on it right there is just like needle sharp, absolutely like great tip. It is, however, rather thin. So um, as you're using the knife, I would just be, I would be very careful with how you use the tip of it, just so you don't break that off. That would be very very bad. Um, the blade is a composite blade that's what that little symbol means and that's what that red line stands for. As you can see the cutting edge here is Vanix 75 
and the the ba the back side of the blade is going to be just be 420 stainless. Um, Vanex is really interesting because it is a high nitrogen steel, and nitrogen replaces car um, carbon in a steel, and so instead of forming carbides, it fo it forms nitrides. So it really contributes to a very high wear resistant blade. However, um, it won't rust. It doesn't have the rusting properties that um, a carbon blade would have. Um, it's also very high in vanadium, and vanadium is going to be what forms the edge here. And vanadium, um, vanadium ha forms the strongest carbides out of all of the elements that they put into steel. And so you're talking about extreme wear resistance. I mean, this is, I mean, it's like sticky sharp still. Um, yeah, oh, and it's also, um, it's kind of a novelty steel. I have, I don't know of any other knives that are made with Vanek 75 yet, and, um, I could be wrong, there might be one out there, I'm just saying, I don't know of it. And so, you know, it's just kind of a novelty to have in your collection. If you want to have a Vanek 75 knife, um, in your collection, the tilt is the way to go. Uh, my one minor nitpick, um, is Kershaw's stone washing, uh, is kind of crappy. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick it up on camera, but you can see there's like a, what looks like a scratch right there, right there, and then on the other side there's going to be two little lines right here, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera, but that's from the stone washing, because this is brand new in box, and it just seems like kind of an uneven stone wash that didn't quite polish evenly, it just seems like excuse me, a little bit of a fail on Kershaw's part for, uh, Kershaw's part for, um, such a high-end, high-end knife as this. But overall, that's a very minor complaint, in my opinion. Uh, overall, I just think this knife is absolutely incredible. I mean, really, if you take this apart, you might even, you can kind of see down in there, it says tilt, milled out inside the liners, you can see a better picture on, on my website. But, it's just, I mean, it's just everything, you know, it's, it's, Kershaw's attempt to make an ultra premium production knife and they succeeded entirely. I mean, I really don't know what you would do more than this to make a knife, you know, useful. And it's a great collector's piece. They made roughly 200 of the all black blade, black handle, black lock face knives and about 600, no, 500, I'm sorry, of the stone wash knives here. So, I mean, it's just like so collectible. There's about 700 of them in existence. I don't think Kershaw's going to make any more. And um, it's just a nice knife to keep in your collection. Great to carry, great to use, and overall just a really, truly brilliant design. I loved this knife. I have loved using it, and it is a fantastic blade. They're on eBay still from time to time. They are not cheap. I've seen a couple sold on Blade Forums Exchange and USN's Cove recently, um, all at relatively attainable prices. So uh, if this is something you like and this is something that you want, get over there, get one and just have it in your possession because these are going to get harder and harder to find as they get rarer and rarer. So that's all, guys. Uh, thanks a lot. As always, check out practicallyeveryday.com. A link is in the description for a full in-depth written review as well as pictures where you can see the liners and the KBT system and all of that stuff. Um, looking forward to your comments, comments on my blog, your views, all of that stuff. Uh, you guys really make this a lot of fun to do. So that's it. Aaron out of here. Take it easy, guys.